Folks, welcome back to the Doing It Diesel Shop. And as promised, we are now into, into the shop truck. Head gasket issues. Oh, got the holiday holiday footwear there. Finally graduated to a pair of real Crocs for my evening wear. Uh, 50 bucks for foam. Yeah, that's too, too bueno. Never would shell out for it. But it turns out there is a difference from the cheap ones. Uh, pretty standard duramax -ity. Head gasket job. The only question being in a square body is what we we're going to have to pull off. We weren't really sure. And as you can see, nothing. Front clip stayed on it. Cooling stack stayed in it. Cab stayed on it. Everything. So we're pretty happy about that. Didn't film it. I got one of the guys doing it. And it doesn't really look to anything special out of the ordinary, even worth talking about. So we're going to head over here. We're going to talk about the, the fueling system and how we did it. How to do a dual draw that'll pull from one side and then the other without valves. If you're familiar with the, the square bodies and the switching valves and all the problems and headaches that that creates, you'll know why we went away from it. All right, whiteboard lesson. LB7 has a CP3, much like that there. We're utilizing a set of fast sumps, one in each tank, that look like that here. The reason we did fast on this is because they draw from the inside so that you don't, the sump itself will hang below the body of the tank but it does not have lines that hang down low on a truck that goes off-road. You don't have that line to be torn off it. And we got ourselves, for filtering and pumping, a FAS. That will get it netted again. That there, we got a FAS looks just like that one. So we've done this on two trucks now, two different trucks, and it's been successful both times. So I'm fairly confident in the design and layout of it. So two tanks with no valve, no switching valve. How did we do it? Fuel's drawn from as close to an equal length as you can get from both tanks and teed as it enters the fast. Fuel is returned from the FAS to the curbside tank and the engine and fuel is supplied to the CP3 on the engine. Fuel is returned from the CP3 on the engine to the driver's side tank. So there's our system. The secret, the key, is in the caps. We use a non non-vented cap on this side and a vented cap on this side. So as the fuel level pulls down, it is able to enter and draw air into this side, but not into this side. That will keep the fuel level in this tank full as it draws this tank down. It will draw that tank all the way to empty, and then it will start pulling from this tank. The fuel gauge we leave on this tank so it stays on full until it starts to draw this tank down. Now if you're experimenting and doing this with a different engine, uh, your return rates, it may take some, some experimenting to get the flow rates right, but it, it doesn't appear to be as particular as one might think. Uh, we've done this now successfully uh, on an LB7, the LB7 shop truck, and on a 12-valve Cummins. Um, this is an 82C30, and this is an 87B20. The principle applies the same. You can do this all the way on your Briggs and Stratton up to uh, your, your rock truck. Okay, so hopefully you found this informative, useful, and somebody's able to use it. Thanks a lot.